You're listening to the Joe Camo Show. Real sports, real talk. I'm excited, guys. Big episode today. I got Ian Smith on the show. What's going on, Ian? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing uh, okay, considering the world circumstances right now, and that's kind of why you're on today. Um, this is going to be more of a heated episode, I think. Not so much with me and you, just me and you versus the world here. Uh, yeah. So I want, you know, so people that don't know who you are, I've got a lot of sports fans, listeners here, fantasy football fans, armchair quarterbacks, gym enthusiasts. I got a mixture of lawyers, doctors, everybody that plays fantasy. My average demographic is typically males, 18 to 45, just to let you know. Uh, but yeah, if people that don't know who you are, can you explain? who you are and kind of what's going on with your situation not only on social media but just with your uh, business as well sure uh i am one of two of governor murphy's favorite small business owners here in the state of new jersey uh, my partner and i reopened our gym against uh shutdown orders in may um and we have been a thorn in the side of governor murphy and the new jersey government ever since um we opened uh, with national press coverage. I went on uh, Tucker Carlson the week before we opened and, and kind of said, hey, we're opening whether you like it or not. Um, and then that kind of caused us um, to be thrown into the media spotlight during all of this. And uh, we took a lot of punches in the process. The short version, uh, Frank and I have over 60 citations. Uh, we have over $1.2 million in fines. We, uh, we get fined $15,497.76 per day uh, that we are open. That originally started as a, um, a punishment for being open, and now it is a punishment because we won't mandate masks inside our facility. Masks are entirely optional. Um, we've had over 80,000 visits to the facility, and not a single case of COVID has been linked back to the facility in terms of a spread. Um, we were the first ones to put out a, a major safety protocol that all small businesses could use. That was kind of the reason we opened up because there was, there was no plan in the works. You know, we were two months into the shutdown and, and um, government officials were just twiddling their thumbs, telling everybody to be patient. So we opened, um, we had our business license stripped. We run entirely off of donations right now until we get that back um, and, and t-shirt sales and water bottle sales. Um, and that's really it. You know, we um, we stood up and, and we took the punches here in Jersey and we've been open ever since. We've had to go through a lot. Uh, we've been arrested. We've been taken out in handcuffs. Uh, we had our doors, the, the locks physically changed at one point. Um, we had our doors boarded up at one point. We kicked them down. I mean, we've, we've done everything. We've stayed here for 40 days, excuse me, 35 days um, with the doors off of the hinges so that they could not come and lock our doors. And we operated the gym 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sleeping in shifts. Uh, we've done everything possible to stay in business. And uh, we're still standing after all that. Before I start asking you questions and diving into this, first of all, the donations, first of all, because people, some people listen at the beginning, they don't stay the whole podcast. I encourage everybody to stay the whole podcast. It's just a typical thing with any podcast because uh, how do they donate the money to you to help support the line mentality here? Because this is complete bullshit what's going on with you and every other uh, gym and restaurant owner right now, not only in the certain states, but in Canada as well, which is where I'm from. So how do we donate right right now? Well, where do we go to, to help support this? Because this is crazy. Uh you can find it any way you want to help out. I always stress to people that fi financial assistance is only one way that you can help small businesses staying open. Um, just by sharing the story and engaging with others and talking about it brings more awareness to not only our situation here at Tillis, but the plight of all other small businesses in the area. So um, my Instagram is sort of my, my platform where I put out all the information regarding what we do. And that's Ian Smith Fitness. Right. Um, and then right on the bio there, there's a, uh, a link tree and in the link tree, there's a, a link to the website. A lot of people support us by buying t-shirts. Um, and then there's the link to the GoFundMe in there as well. But like I said, I like to remind people that it's more about spreading the message than anything. Right. Um, because Frank and I can stay open for as long as we want and we've been open, but we're only one business. And, and the idea is to encourage not only you know, to help and encourage us, but to encourage the people that aren't open to open. Um, yeah. Because the truth of the matter is, is with this kind of thing, it will reach a critical point. Um, 
if enough businesses open where there, there aren't enough government officials to start punishing people. And this thing will fall apart overnight. So that's an excellent way to help too. So head on over to Ian Smith Fitness on Instagram and follow the links there if you do want to support and you like what you're hearing here today. I mean, I had to get you on. It's hard to believe that this is 2020 in America, even North America particularly. Uh, one thing that got me going uh, prior to this call, it got me a little more, even more heated, is that in BC, Vancouver, BC area, that way, uh, out in the West here in Canada, they're thinking of canceling Christmas. So they're saying events gathering banned through Christmas, New Year's in BC with no COVID, uh, you know, recovery in sight. And then from what I'm hearing, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta read this to you. This is absolutely insane because it targets business as well. So apparently this is coming from, who's this coming from? Some health official, um, uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry said this in the 2020 British Columbians had been, okay. So let me read you this part about the gyms here. Uh, and again, they always blow it up. Like, Oh, record soaring. Uh, the virus runs rampant. Like it's always words that like are so, uh, you know, they cause Sensa everything sensationalized. But this is from coming from where's this coming from? The Vic VicNews.com. So it's a legit news source. But again, it continues on saying basically, um, where is this here? Stick with me here. Uh, basically, they're saying the extended measures mean that there will be no multi-household Christmas dinners, Hanukkah celebrations, or New Year gatherings. People who live alone may form a bubble with another unit, but also others are being asked to stick to their immediate household. This year, home for the holidays means staying home for the holidays, said another uh, health minister, Adrian Dix. On the fitness front, spin classes, hot yoga, high-intensity interval training are suspended indefinitely. Other activities such as gymnastics, dance studios, martial arts, yoga, martial arts for discipline, health, all that stuff. That's not important, apparently. Yoga, Pilates, strength conditioning, and cheerleading are on pause until new guidance can be developed. Regular gyms and individual training may stay open. So the point I'm trying to make here and why I got you on is because I'm frustrated. Now, I grew up uh, taking martial arts. I'm all about fitness. I'm not in the best shape of my life because, you know, I'm married, kids now, and I, and I have a home gym here. I've got an Airdyne bike. I'm trying to do what I can here, a Rogue Echo bike. I'm crushing it in my own basement. I'm getting in better shape. Uh, but again, again, the gym is being closed. I had a gym membership. I had to close it to get my own gym here. Uh, but again, what bothers me is that why aren't we focusing on health and fitness and increasing our immune system? And again, knock on wood here, you know, I've, I have green drinks. I alkalize every morning. I try to stay healthy. And I haven't had the flu since probably 2002, 2000. I don't even remember, right? Weird how that works. And yeah, and you just stay healthy. Keep <laughs> keep the environment inside of you clean. And what's sad, and I'm preaching to the choir here, but I want more people to hear when you share this and I should. What's sad is that why aren't they educating? Hey, guys, instead of being fearful and waiting for the savior that is this vaccine, let's get our health back up. This is fucking bullshit, man. And I had to vent, and I, I wanted this episode to be the episode I vent on and I'm frustrated. So, I mean, what do you got to say about this? I mean, is there anything, I mean, you're going through this. So I'm preaching the choir it's, here. You know, it's funny because I, I would, I, I, I've said it a million times. I openly challenge any of these public health officials. I don't care if it's a, if it's one in the States, if it's one in the UK, I, I come and sit down at the table with me face to face, no notes, no bullshit. And let's talk about your public health policy. Put it in front of me and let's make sense of it. And I guarantee you can't do that. I guarantee there's not a, there's not a single one of these idiots who are holding these press conferences and they hold these offices The you know, Fauci at the CDC. I don't know what his uh, equal is up there, but they're all sit down with me. Come on, let's have an open discussion. Let's have an open public discussion about your public health policy. And let's reason, let's reason our way through it. Right. Because I'm not, I, I don't claim to be a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Right. I'm just a dumb gym owner, right? So let's talk about it. What? Yeah. You don't want to have churches open. You don't want to have gyms open. You don't want to have small business, hair salons, all these places. But here in the States, strip clubs are open. Right. Okay. Liquor stores are open. Okay. They've been open. They've never had, they've never had to fight. Liquor stores didn't even have to put up a fight. They were open from day one. They were deemed essential. Schools are closed here in the States, you know, and, but, but you can, you can go to a protest as long as it's the right kind of protest down here. You know right. what I mean? You can gather in mass by the, by the thousands, tens of thousands. That's okay because it's for social justice, all these things, right. And these things turn into riots and, and looting and all this stuff. So all of the things that are good for you, church, right. A lot right. of people go to a lot of people go to church 
And it's not just about, you know, it's not about like praising God. You know what I mean? Like yeah. these people go to church for their mental health, Correct. Their, their, their spiritual well-being. And that may not mean something to everybody. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to mean something to you, but you have to respect another person's wishes to keep themselves healthy and healthy and happy. It's a community, a people, it's a a community people, for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you don't, you don't have to understand it. You, you can think it's a crock of shit. It doesn't yeah. matter. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are a large number of people who go there and they find something within those walls right. and in front of that pastor or whatever rabbi, whoever it is that, that keeps them healthy mentally and right. spiritually. And that helps them be better as a person and be healthier because the physical and the mental are very strongly connected. You know, so gyms, again, you know, the biggest, the biggest criticism we got, oh, you guys, when we reopened, we had all these, you know, all these naysayers. Oh, you know, you guys, you guys just want your muscles to be big. And it's like, if you've ever, <laughs> if, if you've ever stepped foot inside of a gym, you would know that not to be true. You know what I mean? We have a gym here full of war vets, full of police, full of nurses who work in, in some of the biggest hospitals in the country, uh, teachers, middle-class people, people come here for much more than that. Yeah, they're coming here to get healthy physically. They're also coming here to socialize, to forget about their problems for 45 minutes to an hour in the day and sit here and laugh. And, you know, me and Frank joke, our gym is the most normal place on earth. Right. We, we have we blacked out our windows so nobody can see inside. Nobody's wearing a mask. If you step inside, COVID doesn't even exist. Nobody's afraid of it because people are just normal, happy, and healthy. And they come here every, we have, we have people who drive an hour every every single day to come to our gym because we're not enforcing masks because it's normal. And it's it's a place where they can go and be healthy and not be fearful. Well, I think that so, was the stupidest thing. Sorry to interrupt. I think that was the stupidest thing. If you're in a gym, you gotta wear a mask. So what I was hearing in Canada is when they had this, the it's, gym open, you got, I'm having trouble breathing on my own without a mask. So they were saying apparently that when you're on a machine, you could take it off. And then when you get off a machine, you got, it, it's, it's so stupid. I mean, this, this yeah, I'm not, crazy. I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's fucking dumb. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that makes absolutely no sense. And again, put your public health policy on the table and let's talk about it. You wanted liquor stores open because you didn't want alcoholics to go through withdrawal. Right. right? Okay. Too bad. These are the same people that built multi-million dollar and billion dollar overflow hospitals here in the States that were never even used. And you could have, you could have built an overflow, you know, a uh, little hospital for alcohol OD people uh, and let them detox safely there. But instead you kept liquor stores open. Why? Because of the tax revenue. Right. Because you knew that people were going to go. And when you quarantined them, they were going to go grab as many bottles. They set a limit on, on alcohol here in New Jersey. 12 bottles a day is the limit. 12, 12 full bottles of alcohol. I'd like, they're, they're almost expecting you to just drink yourself into a stupor. Right. So you're allowed to have fast food. You're allowed to drink, but sit home, sterilize the world around you. Be fearful. Don't talk to people. Don't see people that you love that bring you joy your friends, your family, don't go out and socialize. Don't go do the things that make you feel good, like working out, like going to church. If you're, you know, if you're a woman, like people not hair salons, you don't know how important that is to a woman, you right. know, like to, to go and go to that place. Again, it's like a, like a, like a barbershop for guys or something like that. Like you don't know Yeah, Okay. It's a haircut. Cool. You could probably get your haircut at home or you could go a little bit without a haircut, but why you can go to Walmart. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Home Depot, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to all these big box stores, but you can't, you can't go feel better about yourself, but you can spend and you can spend and you can spend all you want. Just keep spending, keep ordering from Amazon, stay at home, watch Netflix, drink your alcohol, eat your fast food, be afraid of everything, put on your mask, wear it at all times, be reminded of the virus, watch, watch the news that's sensationalizing everything. But don't be healthy. Whatever you do, don't be healthy. Don't feel good about yourself. Um, just live in fear until we have a vaccine. That's the that's their protocol. Well, and it's, it's crazy. That's it's absolutely nuts. And like how long? The thing was like I was all for it when it first came out because I was uncertain. Okay, what is this? What's the survival? I think we all were. 
right? We all were. And I was okay with staying home for a month. Now I actually have, so I make my money with fantasy football. I have YouTube revenue. I have this draft kits I sell. I have sponsors that come on. That's how I make my revenue, which is good, right? Another way I made revenues, I have a social media marketing business that I have people kind of run for me. In that I had car dealerships, I had restaurants, I had barber shops. And they all kind of shut down. So I lost a lot of revenue in March, which I've not been yeah. able to recuperate. So that's, that's a ton of money out the window. And I had to make it up in other ways. But what I'm saying is, I don't want to talk to those business owners, like a barbershop. I asked them because I went to get my hair cut like a month or two ago. I said, have you really recovered? He goes, you know what? Not really. He's like, we've only kind of hit 40% of where we actually were. Cause a lot of people will learn that I can kind of cut my own hair, or shave my head or whatever it may be. Right. So or a lot of people are crippled by fear. Yeah, that too. They, a lot of people subscribe to this and think like, oh man, I can't, I can't go there. COVID's there. Like, and it's, they've, they've crippled people with fear. You know, it's the, the biggest thing I always say to people is if you turned off your TV and you turned off your, your, you know, your, your news apps on your phone, would you know coronavirus even existed? No. Then, then it's not as big as a, of a deal as, as they say it is because they forecasted that people were going to be dropping dead in the fucking streets right. when this started. Right. Dr. Fauci said there would be 2.2 million dead Americans by the start of summer. We're in winter and we're not even close to that. And our numbers are jacked up and inflated. Like if, if it was what we all thought it was in the beginning, dude, my business would be closed. I would be home. But the reality is, is that they have completely hijacked something that's, that's not what, they portray it to be and they just crank the fear on it it's constant 24 7 you know like i think the biggest the biggest issue with all this is people are so reliant on media and they're so addicted to it um and it's it's not good for us at all it it really it really gets deep inside of our heads and it scares a lot of people and it it, it sways public thought um very far from i think the um just the basic foundations of like logic. You know what I mean? Like people don't, or people, people see this, this number on their screens, you know, a hundred thousand dead, 150,000 dead, a million new cases. And they're like flash. It looks like a casino. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's like designed to, to give you sensory overload. You know, like there's, there, there's blinking lights and there's, you know, there's counters that are scrolling on the screen and you have just panic, panic, panic. If you turn that off, you would not, you would not be walking around with a mask on. You would not be staying at home. You would not be afraid of, of having Christmas with your family, you know, and you, you wouldn't even be considering these things. And yeah. I think that's, that, that's a major issue is that we've, we've become addicted and reliant on media. And these people clearly don't have our best interests in mind, you know, and, and we, we assume, I think a lot of us assume that they do, you know, we, we've, we've, fallen into this complacent place where it's like, oh, it's the news. You know, they care about us. They want to keep us informed. And it's like, no, no, they don't. No, they don't. They don't want to keep you informed because they don't report on anything that's actually relevant. All they talk about is bad things, murders, this, that, you know, civil unrest and, you know, it, it, like all of it, not even just the virus. You know, they all, they're always talking about racism here in America, racism, 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 racism. Uh, when I go about my day, I don't, I don't meet a racist person all day. Me neither. You know, when I walk into my gym, I don't, I don't give a shit. Are you here to work out? And are you here to have a good time? Cool. When I go down and I grab my, you know, my, my burger from the guy there, I don't fucking care. Just make, make me a good burger. Let me pay you for it. And, and I think most people are like that, but the, the media is always just Narrative. poking and prodding and trying to stir the hornet's nest, whether it's COVID or, or the next thing that they just, they want to just make everybody at each other's throats about. Right. It's, it's a narrative they kind of build, you know, left wing versus right wing, this versus that. And uh, that's kind of a problem. It's creating a major division. I don't think a country's been divided. Maskers versus anti-maskers. And, you know, it's yeah. crazy how much hate you have. And, and it's, it's no win. I was listening to a guy's podcast. Um, I'm going to get him on uh, tomorrow, Patrick with David. And they were talking about, you know, mandating vaccines in schools and stuff and employers possibly. So like, for example, let's say an employer says to you, Hey man, I want you to have a vaccine. Be like, okay. I'd be like, screw you. I'm not taking a fucking vaccine. But there'll be a guy in your, in, in your workplace. That'll say, well, 
I want a vaccine. I don't feel protected, right? And then the, the employer would be kind of be like, okay, well, you don't have to take vaccines or you do either way. The employer looks like an asshole and you're still hurting the business because now you're creating division in the workplace. So yeah, you can't really win with this, right? I mean, I don't like, when is this? The thing is how much longer, right? Okay, so let's say the vaccine comes out. Okay, a bunch of people take it. You should feel protected. They should feel protected if they're taking it, right? So I, I think you should. This is this is the thing that pisses me off the most. Like, when do you take the mask? When does this end? Because from what I'm hearing, the, the Ontario government said something along the lines of, "If you don't take the vaccine, we're going to take away and, and kind of I don't know how they word it, but it's basically they're going to take away freedoms. Meaning, you can't go into hospitals without say without a mask. They're going to kneecap you. That's what they're going to do. They're they're using they're using threats of violence. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean violence purely in the physical sense. You know, they're they're threatening you. They're threatening to change the way your life operates if you don't comply. Right. They're saying you can't fly. You know, you can't go to concerts. You can't do this. You can't do that. So they box you in and you're not allowed to do anything unless you comply with it. That's 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 coercion. That's not you know, that's not if you have to if you have to coerce somebody um, to protect their health, you're not protecting their health. Right. Like <laughs> that's not the way, that's not the way medicine and, and health is supposed to work. You know, it's, it's a voluntary thing. You know, if you don't, if you don't want to be healthy, that's fine. Like, you know, me personally, I would rather take health into my own hands. I'm not a big fan of medication. I actually grew up a very sick kid. I had really, really, really bad asthma. Um, I would have like two massive upper respiratory infections every single year. Um, I was on my nebulizer treatment every day. I had a rescue inhaler. I had a daily inhaler. I had some other steroidal medication. I was always sick, weak, um, and dependent on, on medicine up until like I was a teenager. And I finally got sick of it. And I, I kind of weaned my way off of these things. I would have asthma attacks and I would, I would sit and, and drink like hot tea and just try to work my way through it for an hour instead of running to a nebulizer treatment. And eventually my asthma got curbed. You know, I still have a, 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 a rescue inhaler, but I don't, I don't do a nebulizer treatment twice a day. I don't get, I can't remember the last time I got sick, you know, and I do all those things that you were talking about too. You know, I got my protein shake. I, I drink my gallon of water every day. You know, do I want to drink a gallon of water and be pissing 20 times a day? No, but I do it because it keeps me healthy. <laughs> Yeah. I take my vitamins every morning. I make sure that most of the food I eat is pretty decent. You know what I mean? Right. Do, I, do I have a Chick-fil-A sandwich or, you know, a McDonald's burrito every once in a while? Sure. But I make choices. I, I try to get as much good sleep as I can. I exercise daily. Uh, I go outside daily, no matter how cold it is. You know, I, I walk my dog for an hour every day. I, I do these things and I, it's my health. I'll, I'll, I'll protect it. I don't need Uncle Sam or the government or big brother telling me I'm here to, I'm here to help you. You know, that that's a terrifying idea when the government says I'm here to help you. They're never here to help you. Government should stay out of your life and right. protect your essential liberties. And that's it. They're not responsible for your education. They're not responsible for, for making sure you have a, a wage. They're not responsible for protecting your health. They're not responsible for who's over your house on the fucking holidays. You know, like, the, the government has gotten so big and so out of control everywhere around the world that they're in everybody's shit. And that's not what government's for. It's it, that, that is not, at least not a, a, from the American standpoint. You yeah. Know? That's, why, that's why we pay our taxes. Like we pay our taxes and you know, that's why we pay it. Right. Just let us do our thing. Right. Okay. If you want us to control us, I'm not paying taxes. Like it's crazy. I mean, my thing is, and I'm trying to figure this out myself and, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. All of this, I, I just don't see, I'm, I'm obviously the, the virus is real. I understand real, people are dying. So I don't want to take away from that, but the survival rate is pretty high. There is other things that are killing more people that aren't being talked about, right? So, I mean, what is the motive? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it just world control, new world order? Is it conditioning? Is it creating fear and sedating the alphas? Is it tearing down businesses and working on, I, I don't know what the main motive. I have so many ideas and theories in my head because maybe you're more immersed in it and you're seeing it more hands-on. What do you, what is the motive here? What do you think is going on? You know, I'm not, I'm not one to um, subscribe to sort of elaborate down the rabbit hole conspiracy theories, but certain things are, are, are pretty evident. Um, and the, the push for globalism 
is something that is very real. You know, there, there's, there's world summits on this stuff. Governments have, have meetings on this stuff, you know, G8, all these, all these things, you know, and it's, it, it is the natural kind of order of society, you know, as, as we, as we progress as a species, you know, we, we go from, you know, small tribes to, to bigger units of functioning government. And we've spent, we've, we have spanned the globe. We are everywhere as humans, you know, and we're in a modern age where we're all connected now. You know, and, and though we have lines drawn on maps and we have different cultures, we all do interact with each other. Um, and I, I think that's a, a, a fabulous thing. But there are there are certain interests in the world, um, powerful interests um, that that want everything tight and, and bound by by one rule of law and by by one system of control. Um, and they 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 use their influence and they use their power to do so. Um, and these, these people, I, I don't necessarily think that they are evil, um, like they're trying to control the world, but they are definitely trying to accumulate wealth and power. Um, and that may just be a, an individual selfish thing that they're trying to do. Um, right. or, or, you know, that could be some, some part of a, a plan that people are working together towards. But the reality of the matter is, is that globalism is a real thing. Um, and in order to get everybody in line, there's a couple things that need to happen. Um, and one, and that is, that, is the, that is the destruction of the traditional male. Um, <clears throat> over the past 50, 60 years or more, you've, you've seen a very change in the, a, a very, very large change in the idea of masculinity. Um, right. You know, traditionally men are, you know, your, your role, your primary role as man is a protector, right? Right. You know, if you can't protect what's yours as a man, you're not a man. You're not a very useful man, you know, and that starts with your, your, your closest circle, which is your family. You know, you protect your, your wife and your children, you know? Um, and then, you know, as that circle expands, it's your community. Um, and as that circle expands more and more, that becomes like, you know, your society, you know, men are, men are, men are the ones who go to war. Men are the ones who, you know, who fight these battles. And that's just the way it's always been. Um, and if you want to sort of destroy the ability to preserve individual cultures and, and, and preserve uh, and get everybody to fall in line, you have to destroy the men that would stand up to that. Right. Um, and you see that everywhere. You, re you really do. You see it coming from all angles in society today. It comes from the media and entertainment, the way most men are portrayed on like television. They're like oafish and stupid. Um, men have more distractions in front of them now than ever, I think. Um, and, and those distractions are things that I think pull you away from the, the, the basic principles of masculinity. You know, men are less active and less let, and have less physical prowess today than they probably ever have. Um, you know, if, if you follow your bloodline back, I almost guarantee you that you are one of the weakest men in your, in your, in your lineage, right. you know, and that's, that's just, that's just the way it is. And that's not an insult to anybody in particular, but the men that came before us were, were had a lot bigger balls to say the least, you know, we're, you're, you're right. in Canada. Uh, you know, I'm here in the States and if we follow our bloodline back far enough, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of our family came from somewhere else with nothing in their pockets, right, um, exactly. whether, whether they came as a, as a colonist, um, getting in a fucking wooden ship and, and sailing across the ocean, you know, uh, and landing here with literally nothing and, and job number one being like, build yourself a house. Um, you know, I, I don't think many men could, could do that these days. Right. Um, so, and, and that's, that's just one example, you know, and we're, uh, men are isolated from each other. I think more than ever these days, uh, you know, congregations of men, um, used to happen much more frequently. You would have sort of men's clubs where yeah. men interacted with each other and had closer bonds, um, sort of like, uh, like more brotherhood, I think where you learn from each other, you know, you, you learn to be a man around other men. You don't learn to be a man, um, you know, at home with your wife or your girlfriend, like you, you develop the skills for manhood and masculinity when being tested around other men. And that that's competition. You know, you see no competition these days, you know, look at the, look at the way our kids are brought up in sports. You know, everybody Ken Shamrock about that. There's no losers. now. Everybody's a fucking winner. And it's like, that's not the, that's not the way the world works. 
and you're conditioning kids to grow up thinking that it is. And then you have this generation of soft ass people and soft ass men yep. who are afraid to get down and dirty and fight and compete and, and, and scrap their way to the top. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's what life is all about. You know, and I don't mean that in a bad way, like you got to step on people, but, but life is about competition and you're, you're, you're taking that away from young boys and they're growing up to be men who are subservient to government because they think that's the noble thing to do, you know, instead of, instead of take what they need for themselves and earn, earn their keep. And you got, you got guys that are perfectly fine living on welfare for their, for their lives and people that support universal basic income. Um, and it's just, it's a big mess, honestly. Um, but I, I think that you're starting to see a big turnaround with it where men are starting to look around and say, what the fuck is going on here? You know, and you're having uh, a lot of women start to speak up and, and say, where, where, are, where are our men at? You know what I mean? Like a lot of these protests, a lot of these political protests, women outnumber men two to one. Right. You know, and that's, that's something like I, I observed, you know, getting into all this. You know, you go and there's there's twice as many women as men. Why? Why? Why are the women fighting? Why are the why are they the ones standing up? Like that's that's your job, you know, to when something's wrong, when people are doing something wrong, when, when the government is trying to pass some weird bill about vaccinations, you know, mandating vaccinations for your for your kid to get into kindergarten or whatever it is. Why are why are the men not the ones saying, hold up, hold up? No, no, no. You're not vaccinating my kid. Right. You're, not, you're not forcing anything upon me. It's the women. And I think now it's starting to catch on where enough women have gotten frustrated that there is a lack of that masculine protection uh, that men are starting to say, hey, maybe it is my time to step up. Right. I mean, women do the hardest job. They give labor, right? We, I, mean, I was listening to other podcasts to talk about this. Like they are doing yeah, the thank hardest God I don't job. Have to do that. What's that? So thank God I don't have to do that. Exactly. They, you know. So like society has kind of put this pressure on them that you got to be the man too and do this. You have a role too, right? Like you are giving child, but that's a huge role. I mean, now society is all this pressure that you got to work and this and that, you know, if you want to be a housewife, that's, there's no problem with that. That's what you choose to do. Like I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a traditional uh, family here where the old school traditional where my wife is okay with staying home. She's got a full, she works harder than me taking care of kids. That's a responsibility. Then it seems like the narrative society is making, oh, well, you got to equal to a man or outdo the man. The man's got his responsibility. Naturally, he was a hunter or gatherer. That's kind of just what it's been, right? So now, yeah, the man, I find that the male is trying to be tamed down. If you, and you can see it in the, in the media, like Rambo, Rocky, all these guys, we got fucking Twilight being Batman. I think that's who, that's who our fucking Batman is. I smash <laughs> that fucking guy in the face. That's not a Batman. That's not your alpha bat. Get me a man's man to be fucking Batman. That is a role that should be taken on by a fucking alpha, not fucking Twilight here, okay? So it's just, I'm seeing it all the fucking time that the man wants to be neutered. I, I, I you know, you want to dumb down the male. Let the mm -hmm. man be a fucking man. I'm not going to let it happen with me. I'm not going to let it happen with my kid. I mean, I taught my three-year-old daughter. I go, what are you? I go, you're number one. You're a fucking champion. I don't, I don't swear, but you know, and I just build this confidence in her that she could do anything that she wants to, even with my son. Right. You know, you, it's this fear. It's this constant fear. And people will, will say, Oh, Joe, you know, you, you, you and this muscle, you guys are just muscle heads. You guys don't know what you're talking about. I could see the transition of, of trying to, to, to tame the male and we don't need that. We need the males to rise now more than ever, honestly. Yeah. And it's, you know, one of, one of the tools of globalism has been, there's, there's two main tools of globalism um, that, that help push that agenda. And that's um, feminism. Um, and, and before anybody flips the fuck out, we're not talking about civil rights, you know, 1965 or whatever it is, feminism, you know, for equal voting rights and things of the sort. We're talking about the new wave, third generation, fourth generation of feminism that thinks uh, not making their husband a sandwich is, is like a revolutionary right. act, you know. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it, it's it's been hijacked. Uh, 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 what started as a good idea has been hijacked. And in that, one of their missions is is the demasculization of, of the male um, and and making women feel as if they have to be equal to a man in all parts. Right. And the reality is, is that men and women are very, very different, you know, and it's it they push this idea that we're all the same. 
everybody is equal in all parts. Anything a man can do, a woman can do. Anything a woman can do, a man can do. Everything's this just homogenous mix. There's no difference between anything or anybody. Um, and that's just not true. It's not true. We're, we're biologically very different. Um, and studies have shown that too, you know, but we, we, we push this um, or we're pushed this idea that like, okay, in order to be a, in, in order to be a woman now these days, you have to be independent and you have to, you have to, you know, you have to earn just as much as a man or, or, or raise hell about it. And you have to work 40 hours and it's not important to stay at home with your kids, just hire a sitter you know, and put them through the public school system and get back to work immediately. So you can be equal. And it's like, we can be equal without being the same. It, it's a, a woman is naturally going to be better at certain things. And a man is going to naturally be better at certain things. A man has always been a protector and second, a provider. You know, they go, they go hand in hand, the same thing, you know, and if a woman chooses to work, that is, that's, right. that's awesome. That's called freedom. That's called freedom. Right. right? but she shouldn't feel pressured to prove herself as a woman to go out into the workforce and stay in the workforce. You know, there's something to be said about having a parent at home at all times. You know, when, when you get these families where the man goes to work and the woman goes to work and the kids are left to yeah. raise themselves uh, with sitters, uh, with daycares uh, in front of screens uh, and then in the public school system, you're, you, you don't have a parent at home. You don't have one of these figures that's teaching these kids all these lessons that they need to learn literally on a daily basis. Um, because now you've, be, you've removed yourself as a parent from the situation and what they learn is a product of the environment that they're now in. And you don't control what's going on in those situations, you know? So, and then you get these kids that grow up and they have no genuine connection to their parents. Um, you know, they're, they're just the people that gave them birth, you know, and, and, and these kids prioritize everything else over their family because they have no, they don't understand that connection anymore. Well, um, yeah, my, my wife even said, she's like, honey, like nobody will, and, and this stands true unless you're, unless the mother is mentally unstable or whatever it may be, but no, no one will, tr you know, raise the children better than I will is what she told me. That's what my wife said. True. It's true. 100%. 100%. And that doesn't mean that you don't have a part in that. As, as the father of course yeah you know you have a part but a lot of your time is going to go to providing and protecting making right. sure your family is good making sure that your your you know the mother of your children has the necessary tools to build the household and that's and that's that's a that's a a, a, a symbiote that's a relationship that works together to move forward you're not you're not moving in like separate directions you know, who's, who's earning more and, and, and all this stuff and paying for the kids to get raised by somebody else, you know, so you, you have that. And, and then all these other dimensions of, of demasculinization of men. Um, and then the, the blurring of the lines between feminine and masculine roles, you know, it's like, like I saw something the other day, bringing in sports into it, you know, they, they brought the, uh, the, the kicker in that one college team, the girl yeah. kicker, yeah, I forgot her name. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's like, and then everybody like claps and applauds to this like to this lackluster performance in the name of like like inclusivity. Like everybody like right, right. you know they, they name her player of the game and stuff like that. And it's like why are why are we why are we rewarding this? Like right. why why are why is that being pushed? If she wants to play football, play football with girls. That's it's it. It's a violent fucking sport. Like what happens if somebody comes plowing into her and fucking knocks her head off? Right. You know what I mean? And it's like the, it, it, it changes the sport for men because there's no honor for, for a man. Sports, sports is a, is a lot about honor, right? You know, right. like you win, you, it's about winning and victory. There's no, there's no honor in, in plowing over a female kicker and blocking her kick. Like it, it, it changes that, the what dynamic if, of the game. But what if she played, let's say, linebacker or something like that? Now there is women that are more masculine in their femininity and sure, men are more sure. feminine in their masculinity, if that makes sense. Hopefully mm -hmm. I said right. But here's the thing. So let's say you get a woman, she plays linebacker, or let's just say she's playing running back, for example, and I'm a linebacker and I deck the shit out of her. I'm gonna say, Oh, how could you hit a woman like that, Joe? That's that's not right. You can't deck her like that. You purposely Exactly. There's no there's no honor in it. There, there's no honor in, in you clobbering her. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. 
You know in football, I mean? yeah. That, that's what you're supposed to be doing in football. And then at the same time, there's no honor in letting her win either. So it's a lose-lose situation, and it takes away from what the the sport of football, or or in any case, you know, um, whether it's boxing or whatever, whatever you want to like, it it takes away from the integrity of what the sport is, and it turns everything into this mush where like nothing matters. Like like you just take away from the game. Like you don't just give somebody a player of the game award because they they were so brave. Right. And they joined a man men's team. You, you give the player the the, the game award to, to the person who deserves it. Player of the game. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's, it, but, and you see that come all through society where it's like dulled down everybody's, I think, basic senses of like what they're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? And it's, it, it, it takes away, I think a big part from, from masculinity where you just have men who are okay with being mediocre um, who don't want to like raise their voice and, 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 um, tell the world what they think because they're afraid of being like shunned for being, you know, toxic or whatever. And then, you know, you, you follow that down the line long enough. And we wind up in these positions where we're in now with like COVID and everything. And it's like, put on a mask and everybody's just like, okay, what next? And then they're like, take this vaccine. And it's like, okay, what next? Well, you know, and it's like everybody just listens and nobody's like, no, I don't want to do that. No, thanks. Not me. I'm going to open my business. You're not going to tell me what to do because I'm a free individual. I'm a man. I need to provide for my family. You can't tell me to close down my gym. You can't tell me to close down my barbecue place. I'm going to provide. It's not your business. Fuck off. Well, I think there's a lot of people that feel that way. It's just not as voiced. I think the mainstream narrative outweighs everything. And there's three things I want to talk about here. Very important. Like where we were talking about staying on the same tangent here on the same uh, parallel is the Peloton commercial. Okay. So if I'm Peloton, okay. If my wife is overweight and if I'm overweight, I would expect the same. <laughs> Let's say I'm overweight. My wife, I would want my wife to kick my ass and say, fuck you. You're fucking fat. Lose some weight. <laughs> You can't say that. No, if my wife, I told my wife, like I got, I got a, a rogue echo bike. Okay, honey, we need to work. She's in good shape. All right, I'm like, this is for your heart. This is for your health. You know, I want this you because I love you. This is because I love you and I care I, about you. Would you rather buy her a fucking, you know, a dinner? A box of donuts. A box, a of, box donuts. of donuts. Yeah. That's okay. But hey, hon, here's a bike for you for fucking Christmas. Let's get in shape together. I'll use it too with you, whatever. This, I want to see you advance in your health and your body so you're, you're more vibrant, more healthy, more sexy for me. So you can yeah. take care of the kids better, so you can take care of yourself better. There's nothing better than health because without health, you've got fucking nothing, right? And that's exactly. what that's what they're crippling. They're taking us out by the knees. So that Peloton commercial, if I was Peloton, I'd say, go fuck yourself. I want my wife to be in the best shape of her life for her so she can be a better mother, a better person for herself, so she could take care of herself, so she could feel good about herself. And, and, and then you could say, well, they make the argument. Well, Joe, that, uh, they're saying that, that the girl was kind of in shape there. It doesn't matter. It's still good for your heart. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of skinny people that are fucking out of shape, right? So yeah, it, yeah, there's a ton. Yeah, just, because, just because you fit into a size 32 jeans doesn't mean you're in good shape. No. There's a ton but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 so, it's so silly. It, it's... I mean, and, and even you, you have good points with all the health stuff. Like, and that's true. Like you, you do those things because you care about somebody. Right. But at the same time, what's wrong with getting your, getting your wife a bike because you want her ass to be tight? Nothing. What's wrong with that? <laughs> nothing. There, there's nothing wrong with that. But in, in, in today's society, like that's, that's fucking offensive. Like that's, that's, that's a radical idea. The fact that you would want your wife to be attractive and that you would encourage her to do so. You know, you're not, you're not like, you're saying, Hey, you know, I care about you. I know, Hey, I know you're busy and it's really hard for you to get to the gym. I, you know, you're, you're at home taking care of the kids, right. you know, you're, you're running around all day. That's that. I'm glad I don't have to do that shit. That shit is, that's hard. That's stressful. I can't you do know? my wife's job. She, she kicks my ass. I mean, like when she has, she goes out for a bit to stay with the kids, dude, I'm running around. I'm like, shit, these kids are like, I don't know how she does it all day because yeah. I, like, I don't have the mental, like, you know what I mean? Capability to do that sometimes. So it's I exhausting. Think, I'm sure. And, you know, so but get her a bike so she could take care of herself and have more energy to do this. Yeah. Because, and, and so that she can look better and feel better about herself. Cause guess what? That's going to make, make, make her a better person. It's going to make her a better woman. It's going to make her a better mom. It's going to make her a better wife. Right. And, but somehow, they, they always find the worst part of that whole idea and <laughs> blow it up. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's why, like, like I said, like these, these media outlets, they've, they've become very, very dangerous weapons. I think, you know, where 
people just assume what they say is legitimate. Um, and I think that's because most people believe that people are good at heart. Um, and not everybody is like, you know, just because it comes off of some, some website that's, you know, a legit source doesn't mean that you have to listen to it. You know, it doesn't mean that like these, especially these like opinion writers, you know, you get these, yeah. these high and mighty ultra progressive people that are trying to make people feel bad for being who they are. Like, dude, if I buy my wife a, Pel a Peloton bike, cause I want her ass to look nice. That's my deal. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to buy your wife a Peloton bike. You know? <laughs> or you can buy your wife a Peloton bike for other reasons. But the like, problem is that these fucking companies are folding at the sign of resistance. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you just say, no, we stand by this commercial. We feel that people need to get in shape. If we offended you, sorry, but that's your that's your fault. You you should stop stop being offended so easily. Uh, there is not there is not enough of that among, um, and I think that's a, a result of like corporatism, oh, where like bullshit. everybody like you have to please everybody and you can't offend everybody because you have to sell as much as you can. And right. That's they fall into this trap um, where where they put profits over values. I think. And you know what's funny? I'm the fantasy football counselor, right? So I've built a brand. I've cornered the market. Why? Because of my line mentality. Do you play fantasy by any chance or no? I don't. So basically what happens is the top players that performed well this year, the mainstream analysts, basically what they do is they say, these guys that finish on top, draft them again on your fantasy team, pretty much in the same order because they were the top finishers because that's what the natural easy thing to say is. I came in the industry and I'm the kind of like the outcast of the industry. They hate me because I speak my mind and say, hey, this is not the way to do it. You got to think outside the box because these players like Christian McCaffrey had an injury. I knew he was- Things change, things change overnight, season things to season. But they play it safe. All the magazines, the mainstream sites, these top white collar analysts say the same bullshit and they hate me because I'm the alpha of the industry and I call it how it is. Now, I shock the industry when I say that a player sucks that week in fantasy. Oh, Joe, how could you say that that player sucks? He's a professional athlete. Well, he, he sucked. sucked. <laughs> fantasy team, he sucked. What's, and dude, I've had athletes come on and call me out and want to fight. The, get the fuck out of here. Like real athletes, Alexander Madison, the backup for the Vikings, Miko Hardman, the wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, the, you know, I've had athletes come out and say, yo, man, DM me, say, Joe, like, you know, ease up. I'm like, fuck off, man. Like, dude, you guys sucked. I'm calling it how it is. Step up your performance then, man. Uh, you know, it is what it is. And yet the people are, and you know how many haters I have? There is a lot of people that agree with me and people watch me for this, but a lot of people are like, oh, Joe, you're, you're crazy. You're, you're so mean to these athletes. Dude, the athlete, you're sticking up for an athlete that doesn't even know you exist. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know I mean? like, they don't care about you and again it's like dude it, i mean it's the the culture of the offended and it's it, you know it, it's um dude if somebody says you suck because you played a bad game they're, they're not lying like they're not lying you didn't perform and it's like you know as much as like i don't I, nobody nobody wants to hear that they suck but it's true like and they're not, not saying like you're a bad person or like you, you like you're just your life is over. It's just like, oh, Yo, dude, you're not fucking playing well. Okay, and Ian, if you were fat right now, if you were like 100 pounds over, and I said, Ian, you're fat, can you get into shit? As a friend, I yeah. want you to get, would you be offended by that? Would you say, no, you're right, Joe, I, I need to work on it, right? No, it, it's it's true. And and like I've, you know, especially through this, I've, I've learned a lot, like when it comes to like public perception and stuff like that and having people support you and having people hate you. And it's like not all criticism is valid and you need to be able to, to differentiate between between what's valid and what's not valid. Right. Um, but in either situation, you shouldn't be offended by it. Right. So if it's a valid criticism, then it's, it's somebody trying to help you. And if it's an invalid criticism, then what the fuck are you worried about? Let them fucking talk. Yeah, you know, like if, if you're on the radio show saying this guy sucks and he knows he doesn't suck, then what the fuck does he care? But you can say or what the fuck should he? bullying. I mean, there's something between bullying, like kids. I don't agree with bullying and stuff like. If you're a kid, a other kid calls you fat, stuff like that. I don't think that's completely right. I don't think you should torture a child, you know. But if you're an adult and, and someone comes up to you and says, "Hey, man, I think you're overweight. You need to work on your health, and it's for your best interest." You know, I lost my dad to a heart attack. I don't want to see that go to happen to you. You know, my dad wasn't even overweight, and he and he got had a heart attack. So you are a hundred pounds overweight. Let me help you get in shape. Let me buy you a bike. You know what I mean? Like, get you a yeah, and that's but that that it, it all ties back into this like softening of of people's 
uh, skin where like nobody, like nobody can take any criticism because everybody's supposed to be a winner. Everybody's supposed to be equal, you know, and it's, it's, that's not the case. Like you gotta, you gotta kind of earn your keep, you know what I mean? And if, if you're not, you're not earning your keep and somebody tells you that just do better. You know, there, there's been time, there's a lot of times, you know, my partner, my partner's 20 years older than me. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of times where he's, he's, he's blasted me, you know what I mean? For, for me getting distracted and me not carrying my weight or me just fumbling the ball, you know what I mean? And do I want to hear that? No. But do I get offended by it? No. You know, because it, it, it's a valid criticism where he's like, dude, you're, you're, you're doing this and you need to be doing this, or you're not doing enough of this. And I, and, and what's nice is if you accept that from somebody else, you can return that and you can help that person. Right. And then, and it, it, it bounces back and forth. You know, if you can, if you can take criticism on the chin, you can become a better person. Um, and it's, it's, but that's, that's taught to be like, you know, you, you don't criticize anymore unless it's, you know, uh, in the name of social justice, you know, it's only, it's only okay to criticize, you know, certain, certain elements of society. Like you can't criticize certain demographics. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you're a straight man, you can't say anything about gay people. You know, if your uh, if your skin color is this, you can't criticize this. And it's like, no, you can criticize whatever you want. Doesn't doesn't mean you're right. Doesn't mean you're wrong. But it's freedom of speech. You mm -hmm. know, and you should be able you should be able to say, hey, I don't necessarily agree with this. Um, and that doesn't necessarily. And we 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 fall into this trap now where, again, about men not speaking up. Men are afraid to say something because everything that they say negative or in terms of criticism if they criticize or if they speak up or express their viewpoint you know it means that they hate whatever they're speaking out against right and that that's not the case like you know you can you can say you know i don't i don't i don't believe in god i think church is a waste of time right, right. you know that doesn't mean that you hate religion it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you you know you think those people are stupid it just means that personally you don't agree with that or you can say hey i have a I have a traditional family. My wife doesn't work, you know, and I don't want her to work. I want her to be at home. And I think that that's the best way to raise children. Right. That doesn't mean that you think, you know, uh, the family that lives next door where they both work and their kids go to daycare is, a, it, a, it's bad. You just don't personally agree with it. You know, it's like, but you're not allowed to say stuff like that because then you're, you know, you're being toxic or you're, you know, you're whatever. And it's then we, we, we wind up in these situations where nobody has, nobody's speaking up because everybody's, everybody's thinking it, but nobody wants to voice it because they don't want to make any waves because they don't want to get some backlash on Twitter or they don't want to lose their job um, or they don't want to be publicly shamed as, as a, a whatever, you know, whatever is they want to call you. Right. Um, and, and, but then we're all here and we're all wondering who's going to step up and tell these people no. Well, it's a narrative, right? For example, Ellen Page, she is now Elliot Page, okay? So first and foremost, I wanna say that I'm okay if you wanna be gay. I know a lot of gay people, super nice people, but the ones that I know anyway, that's your choice. But yeah. you know, you're saying that you wanna be somebody, another sex, okay? But then you said that if I call her a she, it's offensive. So right now, I, by the way, I wanna tell everybody, I wanna identify as Russell Wilson from the Seattle Seahawks. If you call me LeBron James, or if you call me Josh, <laughs> Pat Mahomes or Tom Brady, I'm a fan. No, no, seriously, I want to be Russell Wilson. And fuck yeah. you, if you call me LeBron James. In Canada, Canada, in Canada, that's like a crime, right? If somebody calls you LeBron James. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, like, you know, I want to identify as Russell Wilson. If you call me Tom Brady, screw you. You are offending me. But the thing is, it's like, and then here's the weird thing. So, like, I was listening to Ben Shapiro, and he did this whole thing on, like, explaining it. So, like, if she is basically a girl, and then she's a guy, so now she's in a heterosexual relationship with her girlfriend, technically. Like, it's kind of all confusing. And you've got to dance around what you can say and what you can't say. Like, and you can't call her a she, but she is a she. But yeah, in, in the show that she's on, Netflix, she still has got to play a female character. But how is that possible? Because she's a male, and males aren't technically allowed to play female characters. And it's that all that all cat that that all goes into the idea of blurring the lines between right. everybody. And dude, don't get me wrong. If you want to do that, that is your your choice, and right. I I support your ability to make that choice. Right. For doesn't sure. mean I necessarily agree with it, and it doesn't necessarily mean I understand it. 
I don't have to agree with it and I don't have to understand it for you to be able to do that. That's called freedom. At the same time, it is not my responsibility to make sure that I do everything right to make you comfortable. Like I don't, you know, if, if, if I remember to call you the right thing, cool. I would prefer probably just to, to say, you know, whatever comes to mind first, I'm not going to go out of my way to accommodate you in the world, especially because I don't know you. I don't, I don't owe that person anything. The only, the only thing I owe anything to are my people, right. you know, my loved ones, my family, my friends. Beyond that, all I owe you is common courtesy right. and, and, and respecting your own and, and respecting your ability to make your own choices as long as they don't infringe on my life. That's, that's it. But we've all been, we've all been told now that we have to accommodate everybody. We have to make everybody feel comfortable. We owe, we owe everything to everybody. And therefore, none of our actions mean anything anymore. Right. And it's like, it, that's fine. You do, you, you love who you want to love. You, you have sex with who you want to have sex with. You, you know, you do whatever you want to do. Freedom. As long, as long as it doesn't impact my life in a negative manner, I support it 100%. But it doesn't mean that I have to go out of my way to make you feel better about your choices. They are your choices. And I, I'm not responsible for them in any degree. I agree with everything you said. My problem is like, I... I, I, let's say I accidentally say, hey, I loved your movie, you know, she, or I loved your movie. She was a great. Oh, you said she. It's the dancing around of stuff that, you know, that. that yeah, kinda like no, I'm not. I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going to play that game. If you say if, if you correct me, then you go he. I'll be like, oh, sorry. He. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. All the accident and I get condemned for saying, oh, well, I enjoyed her in that movie, Juno. She was great. Oh, my God, you're a terrible person. How could you say she when he's a he? Well, oh, sorry. You know what? You know what more? You know what more people need to do in that situation. Okay. Anyway, on to the next thing, and just not care about it. Trivial stuff. Like, like that. That type of shaming is only controlling if you allow it to be. Right. You know, and and too many people have gotten comfortable with allowing that to control their lives. Right. I don't care what you think about me. You know, I, because I know what I do. And, and, and my actions and I know who I am and I'm a good person. If I misgender you or if I offend you in some way, because I'm, I'm not fully understanding of your culture and of your needs and of all that, then I'm sorry, but you need to drop it. Like you, right. you need to get, you need to get over yourself because you're not that important in my world. You might be important in your world, but I, again, I don't owe you that. All I owe you is common courtesy and the right to respect your own choices. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to worry about what you think about me. And you can think about me. You can write tweets about me. You can write articles about me. You can you can tell the world what a bad person I am. But I'm just going to continue on my way and do my things and be loyal to my people. And that's it. And, and I think more, especially more men need to adopt that mindset. And we'll find ourselves in a much better situation because of it. Listen, I know you got a gym to, to run. I want to touch on one more quick thing, which is the vaccine. Sure. But before I do that, I want people to understand that this is about freedom. This is about patriotism. This isn't about like, I'm better than you and the man's got to be all. an asshole. No, this is about keeping it real, right? So a lot of people say, oh, that, you guys are so abrasive. You're so tough. You're trying to be macho. This is just the way that it is. And we feel that it is. We're, we're not saying that women are, are below us. We're not saying that it's wrong to do to change your gender. All we're saying is that it's just everybody is so goddamn sensitive. Lighten the fuck up. Pick your battles. We got bigger fish to fry. And and anyway, that's I had to get that across here. So uh, last thing, vaccine. Again, the uh, I think he's an owner of the Australian, uh, one of the Australian airlines coming out saying that he wants to mandate vaccines upon flight, taking away restrictions, taking away freedom. Personally, you don't have to say it, but I'm going to say it. I'm not taking a goddamn vaccine for many Hard reasons. pass. Hard pass. Number one, it's been, <laughs> it's been rushed. And you can see the mainstream saying it's not being rushed. I still think it's rushed. The common cold, there's no vaccine for the common cold. HIV, there's no real vaccine for HIV. Cancer, there's no real cure for cancer that we know of anyway. There could be in the lab somewhere that it's being hidden to control population. That's a whole other thing I'm not going to get into. This thing is rushed. I don't care what you say. Number one, we don't even really know much about COVID because some people are dying from it. Some people are just shaking it off. Maybe they don't even have the entire genome sequenced yet. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> strains of it. We don't know. And now you're creating, manufacturing something that you're going to stick in my body that we don't, by the way, this hasn't, from what I understand, I'm not a doctor. I don't know all the technical. This could be whatever, but I, from what I hear, it hasn't been tested on pregnant women because you can't test on pregnant women because you can't rip, put them at risk. So if you're afraid to test on pregnant women and you don't know the side effects of what it could do to a pregnant woman, you're going to inject this into a body that, of a woman that could potentially be pregnant, maybe a young child. You know, that's number one. Number two, we don't, we don't know the long-term side effects. Number three, it's rushed. Number four, it's like, there's, I've got so many reasons, but number one, the main thing is I don't know the side effects. I don't know much about COVID. You're not sticking that in me, but yet they're bringing it out like it's the the, the solution. Like working out isn't the vitamin C, zinc, and all of these other things. You know, you could build your immune system, yet they're gonna tell you that you gotta get this vaccine and this, and they're gonna who are they gonna give it to? The most vulnerable right off the bat. So even if it, COVID isn't gonna hit these vulnerable people, these older people. They're going to get a little bit of a sample size and they're going to put something in called mRNA. From what I hear, it may or may not be altering your gene. I don't know. I'm not going to get into the facts of it, but you, you got mRNA, which typically isn't used in vaccines. Now you're going to put that in people. I have a problem with this, right? I mean, for me, it's up to you guys if you want to take it. For me, it's not touching my family. It's not touching my kids. It's not touching me. And I've already taken the infrastructure so that if I have to homeschool my, my kids, I'm ready to do that if schools mandate this. What are your thoughts on this? Absolutely not. Under no circumstances will I be taking a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, I would highly recommend for anybody who uh, is considering it um, to just take a step back and rethink that. Um, for all of the reasons you listed and many, many more, um, 99.9% .9 survival rate. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm used to be a gambler. I'm not much of a gambler anymore. Um, but I'm going to take those odds, uh, right. against a mystery substance that's going to be injected into my body. Right. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to continue to drink my gallon of water a day, even though I don't want to, and I'm going to eat my vegetables every day, even though I don't want to, uh, and I'm going to stay away from, you know, drinking too much alcohol even though that would be easier to do. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with health uh, over <laughs> vaccination. Um, and, and that's just, you know, that, again, that's a personal choice. Anybody who wants to take it, that's cool. Um, but you try to force me with that shit. Um, and I promise you that it's going to end bad for somebody uh, probably whoever's got that needle and is close to me. <laughs> I um, agree. And I, I don't, I don't say that to be a tough guy, but I'll die before I take that vaccine. Me too. I'm on the same end, man. And again, from, from what I hear in Ontario, Canada, they won't force you. Like I said, they're not, we said we can't force people to take it, but what we will do is probably restrict you from doing certain mm -hmm. things. So I, I can't wait to see these restrictions because I will break those restrictions. I don't, you're going to, oh, I absolutely will too. And I think, I think that enough people are, are getting to the point where they're like, Mm, nah, like I, I think, I think that enough people because of, you know, the communication networks that we have on the internet and, and just in general, I think enough people are kind of waking up to like, mm, I don't think so. I'm sure there will be plenty of people who take the vaccine and right. I wish them all the best of luck with that. Um, but I won't be taking it and uh, I will be very, very strongly um, protesting any, any, any mandatory vaccinations uh, here in the States. Um, and I'll, uh, that's a, that's a hill that I'm very prepared to die on. And a lot of people, even the people that are willing to take the vaccine are saying, well, let somebody else be the guinea pig. Let somebody else do that. <laughs> Dude, how about just don't take it at all? And, and, and yeah. that's kind of mean. And that's where society has gotten where we're not caring about the fellow man. It's like, let that, that asshole be the guinea pig. I don't give a shit about him. Like, that's a terrible way of thinking. And hopefully people got something out of this, this podcast to say, Hey man, I got to stand up for freedom. Cause that's what it's all about. That's why we live in this country and not in some sort of dictatorship country yet. You're going to dictate me to wear a mask. And I understand, you know, the, the aspects of it, it is kind of helping drop what's come across, but understand too. I listened to a doctor say that, and I'm not a doctor. I heard this and you could say they have me. no, they have no efficacy whatsoever. Well, the thing no. is, if you have the virus deep down your throat, it's more potent. Like if I spit a, a thing out, it's going to lose its, it's um, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to be as powerful. Right. And, and it's very rare that this droplet's going to shoot out to you, go down your throat. You know, I guess it does minimize a little bit, but I mean, how often are you going spraying and spitting in people's faces? For the most part, you're going about your business, walking around, and if it's all overblown, and again, how long can this stand? Okay, once you got the vaccine, is that when it's okay? Can we take the mask off now? Like when? Nope. 
nope, well, they're even they're even saying that. And that's it, that's just I mean, just to to it won't end until we say it ends. Because they will keep trying to push the newest thing, the newest thing, the newest thing, the newest thing. We saw it with 14 days. Uh, 14 days is now like 270 here in the States. Right. Um, and it's it, it's it's time to put your foot down and say yeah. no and say we're done. Done with the masks, done with the vaccinations, done with closing businesses, done with restrictions. I'm going to get back to my life and you're not going to stop me from doing so. And when enough people do that, the house of cards just falls apart overnight. Right. I think I think I think that's the biggest takeaway. Um, be be a part of what you know is the right thing to do, not what is the socially safe thing to do uh, in terms of like losing some friends on Facebook. Yeah, and I want to end this by this, but take a look around you. Like I went to a, a store yesterday. It was a department store where they sell trees and stuff. And it's like when you walk in, they got two carts blocking the gate. Have you had any contact? Have you been out of the country? It's like everywhere you go is an interrogation. And like, I mean, if you would imagine this, like if I said to you, hey, man, uh, Ian, uh, we got to walk into a place. We got to wear a mask. We're going to be questioned everywhere we go. There's a vaccine coming out that we're not aware of. And this all this time, you'd be like, Joe, you're fucking nuts. That's not that would never happen. And even the wearing a mask now, it's almost like imagine this, every time you saw people wear a mask, they'd be like out of country. People would be like, that's kind of weird. And you, now it's weird. It's almost weird. If you're not wearing a mask, you almost feel kind of like you're like you're the odd man out, which is like weird because. Wearing a mask, I think, is weird. The whole, it's this conditioning where even me, the alpha, the lion who believes this, some of this stuff is bullshit, is feeling kind of weird not wearing a mask at times. And I'm almost, like, when I went out with my kids yesterday, I'm like, I'm just going to wear the mask because I don't want to fight with this with this attendant at this gas station or wherever I am in front of my kids. And even my son's looking at me, like, crying. Like, who is this guy with the mask? And I'm like, hey, peekaboo, it's me. Like, it's it's crazy. This is just not normal, man. This is crazy. But it, it, it just, it ends when we say it ends. And I think the more that people realize that, the quicker that we'll all get back to a very normal life. Okay, man. Ian, I appreciate I know you got to get to work, man. We appreciate you being on. Ian. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, guys. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. We're out. Real Talk.